What you see behind me here is one of many radio telescopes here at the Owens Valley Radio Observatory, AKA the OVRO. We have special access tonight. Uh, this facility is co-owned by Caltech and New Jersey Institute of Technology that is specifically designed for basically collecting radio transmissions from outer space to see if there are any signs of life or basically any, any other astronomical phenomenon. So while they are listening, we will be viewing and looking at the cosmos tonight. So let's just get to it and welcome to a new episode. So I was given an opportunity to take a trip up to a radio observatory outside of Bishop, California called Ovro, or more informally as big ears due to the shape of the 288 antennas spread out over an area equal to about 450 football fields, the large one measuring at 130 feet in diameter. Believe it or not, this observatory is actually one of 10 facilities across the US that make up the very long baseline array. It's co-owned by both the California and New Jersey Institutes of Technology, so that means it's private land, so be sure to contact someone before driving up and setting up shop. So after arriving in Bishop, my friends and I drove up off the road for about 30 minutes in order to get to the actual site where the OVO is at. There we did a few establishing shots to make sure we got compositions for the evening before setting up for the rest of the evening. Okay, so we are in the installation right now. Sun's currently setting. Uh, getting close to Blue Hour. Actually, we're in Blue Hour right now. So the plan of action is to kind of catch the Milky Way arching over. Probably won't be a perfect arch, but it's going to be arching basically over the uh, installation right here. And then there's a really cool road coming in that I think I can like catch with the Milky Way going coaxially. I'm gonna basically going to be standing on a road. So it's going to be for a, like a two for one landscape kind of focus. Maybe actually get smart from my place. And then we're going to actually do like an astral portrait later on. So um, yeah, hopefully my pre-workout lasts long enough to keep me awake. So yeah, let's get to it. This particular location proved to be different from my usual haunts. Instead of static foregrounds, the antennas around the observatory move from time to time in order to maximize the amount of radio signals that they can receive from outer space. So you won't have the luxury of taking single shot photos without some post-processing merges going on later on. In addition, Radio telescopes have this red beacon light that will be a large factory for images and the local highway as well as the town of Bishop are nearby to provide their own interference in the form of light pollution. With nightfall fully upon us, I started setting up for the photos of the evening. I still had some time to do light painting shots before it got too dark and as the light started fading into twilight, the stars were beginning to show. So having the stars with the last bit of sunlight in my images gave the composition a very interstellar vibe and with the antennas all around me it gave a more of dark, mysterious, and industrial vibe as well too. I've been leaning more into using a pretty basic setup for light painting since I do a lot of it on my own. My field kit currently consists of the Magic Tube kit from Eric Paré's Tube Tribe and a long white tube with either an RGB critter flashlight that is modular in color choice or a Claris flashlight that has a bit more juice in it regarding lumens emitted. As I mentioned earlier, I was always fascinated by science topics as a kid, especially astronomy, so it was a bit of good fun to pull these astronaut photos off in what I would say is a pretty thematically congruent setting. Wow, this is some really dramatic looking lighting, jeez. Alright, but this uh, headlamp does not have a brightness setting, it's really just red or just full on light, so me. Okay, we're gonna, we're trying to do this with the wind protecting muff, but it's like flying off, so you guys are just gonna bear with it. Hopefully I'm like talking loud enough, but phase one, it just got completed. Um, I don't mind the uh, dramatic looking lighting here, it's either this or like just full on white, so we're gonna roll with it, but anyway, phase one is done we just like painting um a couple of shots just with like the fading blue light um blue hour light so yeah basically we just got a few more hours until the milky way rises so i'm just killing time watching uh some oh we can't even pull it up but yeah we are currently just watching some lucas trace trying to watch the uh Trying to get some like uh, feedback or trying to get some uh, news from the front on the uh, Islam Poirier fight. So 
Yeah, I didn't know. That one's got me nervous, but hey, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Anyways, I guess to fill you guys in on phase one, light painting basically got the astronaut outfit on right now. Um, we basically had like these uh, radar, excuse me, not radar dishes, radio dishes looking towards the west, had some of the fading blue lights, so I just kind of recorded myself messing around with the short white tube, and then I was messing around with the white tube with some of the zebra stripes, so just playing around with whatever light I had left to kind of get some shots. They look pretty cool, so I'll see how they look in posts, but uh, basically the setup was about like um, ISO 400, ended up bumping up to like 1000, I think even 1600, um, F4, 4.5 because I didn't want to like really fight with the focus and stuff so I just wanted to just get it done and then just do it in about I'd say about five second exposure takes so all along it came out pretty good so still a few more hours until midway so I'm gonna get back to watching uh, Lucas Tracy uh, will the diamond pull it off who knows uh, kind of hoping the diamond pulls it off but I don't know we'll see so all right see you guys in a little bit Unfortunately, Poirier did not pull off the win, but we did manage to get some great light painting self-portraits, so that takes the sting out of the evening. With nightfall fully upon us, I started setting up for Milky Way photos. Okay, update time. So, Milky Way core is rising above us. Um, I am trying not to shine a light over towards yonder because some people are shooting, exposing for the Milky Way, but we got this really cool composition with the dishes that I'm going to try to get. The Milky Way basically marching over and then we're gonna try to play around with smash of portraits because I think we have some really good story building going on here. So still decked out as an astronaut. So we're gonna get some shots here. Looking at ISO 6400, 25 seconds with the 14 mil broken on and got at F2.8 for the Milky Way. And then we'll probably drop down to F4 because I'm gonna pull out some lights here and try to basically do like a merge later on down the line. So, all right, talk guys a little bit. I post them near these deep synoptic array antennas since I thought it would look great with the Milky Way rising horizontally in the sky behind them. And since they are not motorized, I wouldn't have the fear for having movement in my photos during the exposures. For these exposures that I took in front of these antennas, I would say that my flash was definitely an invaluable tool in capturing these photos. I'm also gravitating towards this use of lighting in regards to landscape astrophotography, or I guess in this case, astroportraits, because you still want to have some lighting that will shine on the subject of the photo. And I do find that sometimes astro landscape photos can be a bit lacking. And quite simply, we've seen enough photos where, you know, you see the Joshua Tree Arch or Mobius Arch a million times. So I think this is a venture that I'd like to explore more and more in the future where I am basically being the model and a photographer while still in a landscape astro photography context. Despite the complications of such a unique location, I managed to get a good bounty of photos where I'm using either natural lighting flash or ambient lighting from the surrounding beacon lights. With that said, I packed up my car and headed back to the hotel in Bishop. Whew. It is currently two o'clock, we are back from the field. Got a lot of shots, I'm about to go to sleep, but, but. Got a lot of really cool shots with the flash. Um, I'm still dressed up as an astronaut, but uh, doesn't matter. We got the shots that we needed, and we will review in the morning. It was a great experience going to Ovro. I got some great pics, visited a spot I wanted to see since I was a kid, and had a spectacular time underneath the stars. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.